Sonic the Hedgehog is a series that's always interested me. Over the past 30 years, there's been a lot of ups and downs. A lot of downs. But I've always been drawn to the games. Something about them just... It just... Speaks... Speaks, speaks to me. It speaks... Why are you here? So let's set the scene. 2011. Sonic's 20th anniversary is fast approaching, and Sega wants to do something to celebrate. Now, the last time Sonic Team tried a celebration game, it turned out... Um... Not good. Really not good. But there was some hope. Following the Disaster Project and the other lesser Disaster Projects, there were some bright spots. Sonic Colors was well received, and financially the series was doing okay. There was a lot of criticism, but reason to be positive as well. So the devs got to work and released Sonic Generations. The game was well received, getting marks that were similar to Colors, and sold nearly 2 million copies in the first 6 months. But then time went on, and Sonic just got... worse whether through muddled vision, bad gameplay, or aggressive mismanagement of the staff, the series hasn't been doing well. Okay, the games haven't been doing well. Okay, yeah, that did pretty well, and maybe that had something to do with being made by Not Sonic Team, and maybe if Sega continued to do that, we'd be in a better place, but I'm on a tangent. While there are some outliers, the reception of the games have been less than positive, so I look to the past. Sonic Generations is framed as a celebration of Sonic's past and all the things he's done over the years, but it also struck me as Sonic Team in an act of desperation. By throwing as many elements into a game at once, it has a sort of what-do-you-want-from-us attitude, so I looked to the game for answers to my questions. Just what's wrong with Sonic? What actually works? And most importantly, where do we go from here? So, I noticed something interesting about the game on my second playthrough. The game is meant to celebrate Sonic's past, but Sonic has a history of ups and downs, and what I find particularly interesting is how the game's design reflects that, with some pieces of the game working well, some pieces being rough gems that can be improved, and some pieces that can be fired into the sun. So let's start with the aspect that perhaps deserves to be fired into the sun the most, setup and plot. Now, before I tear into this game, I do want to make one thing clear. The fact that Sonic repeatedly tries to include larger stories and worlds in its games is good, and I like that they're included. That being said, it's bad, it's bad, it's really quite a mess. Okay, so it starts off normally, with classic Sonic running around Green Hill, but then this thing shows up. Then time skips forward to the modern day Sonic, who is celebrating his birthday with all of his friends. SURPRISE! This is a cute scene, and it's nice to see all these characters being genuinely fond of each other. Don't get me wrong, I like the angst that the series can have, but I like the wholesome too. There's just one problem, and that's the directing. Something about the physical movements of the characters and the cutscenes just feels off to me, like a middle school play. Everyone is overacting to some level. Here's an example. Yeah, right. Why does he do this little fist pump thing? It doesn't really match what he's saying. This happens quite a lot in cutscenes. Here's another example from later in the game. I can't believe there's two of me. I think I figured it out. Yeah, me too. Doubles of us? Places and enemies from our past? We're, We're traveling, traveling through, through time, time and space! space. Watch one character and only one character in this. For bonus points, go back and do this for each character. This is one of the most awkward moments I've ever seen in a game. Was there any direction given? Why is Tails doing this? Why are you so weird, Tails? You put a bow on a chili dog! Why are you so weird? Anyway, Sonic is enjoying his birthday party when the thing from earlier shows up and vacuums everyone up, leaving everyone trapped in limbo. Sonic wakes up in an empty white void, also known as where my videos are set. This is the hub area. From this limbo, you go out into the different mission areas, which are all different levels from older Sonic games. As a concept, this works. I like the idea of going through old Sonic levels. 
things. But there's one problem with all this, and that's that it raises a lot of questions about the canon and the timeline. Okay, so right off the bat we have two timelines to work with, Classic Timeline and Modern Timeline. Classic Sonic is merciful and linear, but the Modern Timeline is similar to the timeline of DC Comics, in need of a reset and convoluted as fuuuuck. There are typically two ways to structure the canon of a series, serial and episodic. An episodic series will typically have the same characters and setting, but the world can be affected however the writers want without affecting the overall series. Think South Park. You can destroy the planet and the next episode will start like any other. A serial series, not sorry, includes a continuity that continues from episode to episode. Think Avatar. Things in one episode affect future episodes and the world. The problem with Sonic is that it tries to have it both ways. The world is barely affected game to game. They blow up the moon in Sonic Adventure 2, and the games march on as usual. However, the characters, and to an extent the player, can only have full understanding of things by knowing the events of the previous games. Example, Silver knows the Sonic crew. This should be impossible since Sonic 06 ended with the entire story being wiped from the timeline. He does appear in Sonic Rivals, but he comes from the future in that too, and there's no explanation as to why, so it's a mess either way. Blaze returns to her own dimension at the end of Sonic Rush, so why is she here? Sonic 06 was supposed to be a reboot, but half the cast wouldn't be there if not for the actions of Sonic Adventure 2. Is the storybook series canon? No clue, but Sonic seems to remember the events from it, so I guess so. But if that's the case... Then that means Sonic and the Black Knight is canon. So Sonic met King Arthur. If Sonic met King Arthur... Whether King Arthur was a real historical figure or not is debatable, and in our world, it's highly unlikely that the legends about him are true. However, magic exists all across the Sonic canon, and because of this, it's reasonable to assume that the more mythological aspects of King Arthur can be taken as reality in the world of Sonic. So, with that being said, here is a list of some of the things that are implied to exist within Sonic canon due to the appearance of the mythical King Arthur. The quest given by God to find the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail, God, Jesus Christ, Judaism, Christianity, the crucifixion of Jesus by the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire, the fall of the Roman Empire, the Catholic Church, Catholicism in Britain, the Crusades, and of course, flour. This all might just be me showing off how much lighter fluid I dip my brain in, but given how little is explained, I think Sonic Team was following a similar procedure. None of this is to say that it makes Sonic bad. I think having the extended timeline is okay, and episodic entries are fine too. I just wish Sonic would figure things out and have some consistency. A hard reset might fix this, but it would mean nothing if the team didn't have some sort of direction. A continuing saga can have plenty of exploration and experimentation, but it would be nice if they could pick a world history and stick with it for more than one game. Now, back to your regularly scheduled content. Do 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 do. So the setup isn't explained too well. This Diablo raid boss looking thing is messing with the space-time continuum, and now you're trapped in the Apple Store with a bunch of old Sonic levels. The two Sonics realize this is a little sus and have decided to team up. The Sonic friends are there too, but they're frozen and lifeless, like the levels. By completing both the classic and modern levels, they're freed from these effects. I just have one question though. What kind of psychological damage does this do to everyone? Because I'm an unfun person, I looked through Dungeons & Dragons spells for reference. A banishment spell is definitely involved, but there's the matter of how they got frozen like that as well. The closest I can find is Imprisonment, which is a 9th level spell it's really powerful. that permanently restrains the target and locks them in stasis, meaning they don't age and they don't need to eat, sleep, or drink. But based on the testimony of many of these side characters, you remain conscious the entire time. This is similar in many ways to Solitary Confinement, an atrocious practice that does extreme harm to victims of it, and is regarded by the UN as torture. They do this to Cream. Cream is a four-year-old. Eggman, you are a war criminal. Anyway, Tails and Short Tails figure out what's going on after doing a bunch of levels. We're traveling through time and space! Ah, thanks! Now I get it! I don't get! What are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm reviewing Sonic Generations. I know that, but come on, look at yourself. You aren't giving any thoughtful critique. You're just taking pot shots at the story because it's an easy target. Well, I don't know. I thought it would be a fun start before the real review and analysis stuff. Bullshit. You're acting like...
No, I'm not. All right. Then, either way, you're gonna turn out real well. Shut up! You want me to shut up? Do your damn job! Talk about the levels, the characters, review the game, don't recap it! Okay, fine, I will! Why do you have to be here? Okay, so the plot is as straightforward as a bowl of wet noodles, but how is the gameplay? Well, let's start with the controls. It's... weird. For clarification, I played the PC version of this game. That was a bit of a mistake. Don't play this game on a keyboard. For starters, the control mapping is bizarre. Press start. Start is mapped to escape, commonly known as not the key that starts things. There's also no mouse functionality. The game treats it like it isn't real. This is because it's a really lazy port. Instead of most PC games, where the controls are altered slightly to fit the mouse and keyboard, Sonic Generations has just taken the Xbox version and mapped the buttons to the keyboard as if it's one giant weird looking controller. The reason space is both jump and menu selection Selection is because that's what the A button does, and the A button is mapped to spacebar. It's extremely low effort. The other problem is they don't tell you what the controls are. At the start of the game, you're presented with a little menu to map keys to controller buttons, but the bind screen doesn't tell you what each button actually does. So if you've mapped enter to the A button, you won't be given any indication as to what the A button is used for. Ah, but perhaps the in-game button prompts will help you understand, I hear you ask, and I answer thee with a no. All the control prompts are in Xbox buttons, so they're no help whatsoever. So in order to have a chance at playing this game, I needed a controller. Lucky for me, I happen to have a PS4 controller handy and no idea how to get PS4 controllers to work on Windows 10. I mean, lucky for me, I happen to have a PS4 controller handy and discovered DS4 Windows. I mean, lucky for me, I happen to have a PS4 controller handy and was recommended DS4 Windows by one of my lovely artist friends, whom you should definitely most certainly follow. Anyway, so I finally got the controller to work. And I also want to point out that I only had controller issues with the PC port. To my memory, there were no visual or audio glitches, and any issues I had were, I assume, issues with all versions. Except the 3DS version. To talk about the 3DS version, here's my friend, Blue Flare Blitz! The 3DS version of Sonic Generations. Why aren't there any cutscenes? They're replaced with idle character models or something, whatever it is, with text boxes, which does get the story across, but they're not as lively as the animated scenes that were in the PS3 and Xbox version. Granted, they'd be pretty low quality if they had the animated scenes in the 3DS version, but I mean, it at least be still something more lively than those text boxes. And like, why the hell aren't the levels, like, from the home system of the PS3, why aren't those just on all the systems? Like, I get that they want variety and, you know, they have their different levels for the other stuff. But, like, why not just stick with the same levels so that it'd be easier and they could just make it for the 3DS version so that you could still play Chemical Plant or whatever. Because Chemical Plant was my favorite. And I was so excited to get the game when I got it, I don't know, a few years ago when I had a 3DS and it didn't have it. Granted, I didn't do my research. I was a dumb idiot at the time, but I guess that's what it is. And the 3DS, it's very low quality. I'm just gonna go out and say it. I've heard that the controls for it is at least easier because they respond better, but I think that it doesn't really matter. I mean, the game plays, so it works. The 3DS version has, like, a really shitty Eggman Big Arms boss battle in, like, a small little circle with pillars, and he just hovers around and does simple punches, or slowly moves by the circle to try to catch you. Like, what is he- <laughs> whose idea was this? Like, yeah, we'll just put Sonic in a little circle and, you know, just put Eggman with the big arse arms and just, like, I just love it when he, like, just goes on by. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get you. Damn it. I'm going to grab Sonic fast enough with my giant, heavy, metal robot arms. It really takes about a minute to defeat. Like, it is not that much of a level. Like, you can't even hear it's 
awesome, badass theme the entire way around because it's just, it, it's a really simple and not really interesting boss battle. Like, yeah. If anyone wants to get the game, I recommend getting it on any other console. The 3DS version, it wasn't bad, but it didn't really have all that great quality. Did I like it? Not really. Would I buy it again? No. <laughs> Stop wasting your friend's time. Shut up! Anyway, the game is structured in three parts. Do the levels, do extra stuff to get boss keys, fight a boss. So let's talk about level design. Levels play out in two ways, classic and modern. In the classic levels, things are pretty simple. 2D platformer, go left to right, I assume you've played a Sonic game before. These levels are kind of unremarkable. Don't get me wrong, they're fun. I just don't have much to say about them. Classic levels are perfectly functional, relying primarily on speedy bits, fine, platformy bits, fine, and gimmicky bits. Gimmicky bits are a mixed bag. The best of them are kind of fun and keep up the flow. The skateboard in particular is a really 90s power-up, but is by far my favorite. But then there's spikes. Spikes is slow, hard to control, and on a frustratingly small time limit. So yeah, bit of a mixed bag. But overall, these levels are serviceable and can be a lot of fun. So while I'm here, let's talk about structure. The levels, both classic and modern, are split into a lot of different paths. On one hand, good. This makes levels highly replayable. On the other hand, the game feels padded. While the levels are dense, there are only a few of them, with the majority of the content being found in the 90 bonus missions, which you only need to do 9 of to get through the game. I'm not certain going in the opposite direction would resolve this. Like, I'll take a few really good levels over a lot of bad ones, but I wish there was more here. Perhaps making two levels with two paths instead of one level with four paths would be better. But honestly, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? I mean, I don't know. I like an abundance of content, but high quality is important as well. Ideally, you want both, but sometimes that's not always possible for the final product. That doesn't matter. You're the critic. It's your job to state what's best. No, it's not. I have my opinions, and I try to keep them well-written and well-researched, but I can't be 100% objective. I mean, come on. I'm not- <laughs> You'll never be as popular as him, you know. You'll always be a failure when compared to him. Say it. Say it. I don't agree with you. You will. Modern Sonic, who I will be referring to as Sonic from now on, is the primary reason I wanted to make this video. And we had some artsy nonsense that I wanted to make. This is partly because I don't have much to say about Classic Sonic, but more so because the current iteration of Sonic is the one that the games will most likely be made with, and it's by far the more flawed of the two. A lot of people think these current Sonic games are hopeless, and while I've always thought those people were coming from a place I understood, I also thought they were wrong. Even playing Sonic Forces, a game with so many problems that the list of them would put a flight manual to shame, had just enough moments of genuine fun that it reminded me why I'm a Sonic fan in the first place. And while I'm on a completely different subject to what I'm supposed to be talking about, I'm going to continue this tangent by talking about the visuals and audio. Can you at least try to keep this structured? Look, script writing isn't my best skill here, okay? This game looks amazing, and I know I should dock a few points for reusing old concepts like a YA author trying to make a new fantasy series, but honestly, I don't care. They look great and put a really cool spin on old ideas, like a YA author successfully making a new fantasy series. Take Sky Sanctuary, for example. The original looked fine, but this one. You got the garden aesthetics, you got the futuristic sci-fi aesthetics, you got the ancient Athens aesthetics. It's good. The more modern levels don't have much changed, but Sonic Team was smart enough to include the better stages from each game, so everything looks great. Even Crisis City, the level from Sonic 06, looks great. I don't know why everything is lava, though. That's always confused me. 
And then there's the music. I'm not a fan of every Sonic track, but the ones here are absolutely fantastic. My personal favorites are City Escape, Speed Highway, Crisis City, and Rooftop Run. You might say, dude, that's like half the levels. And you're right! There are that many great audio tracks. Except Planet Wisp. I don't really like that one. Are you done? Maybe. Now, when talking about level design, there's an important thought process that takes place in my head. How much of the level design is bad, and how much do I just suck? Because I want to make this clear. I can be really bad at Sonic, although the game doesn't seem to be aware of that judging from how many S ranks I got. But even if I suck, I still have my complaints. Sonic goes fast. That's a given. You want to make Sonic go fast. However, in my opinion, the series has always attacked this issue from the wrong angle. Too frequently the focus has been on getting as high a speed as possible, and too little on keeping that speed. For contrast, Mirror's Edge is a game where you don't go very fast. You're a normal athletic human running at normal athlete speeds. Instead, the focus is on keeping your forward momentum and staying at top speed. This works really well because even if you don't travel at high speeds, you feel like you're moving quickly. It's all about the flow. Sonic doesn't really have that. Levels have two parts, speed and platforming. Speed parts are a lot of fun, but they feel like roller coasters. There is little to no control, you just hold forward and boost. This isn't awful, it's just not very challenging. Platforming parts are almost the exact opposite end of the spectrum. Any sense of speed grinds to a halt, and the way Sonic controls doesn't suit slow platforming. It takes him just a second to get going, sort of like an ice level, but a lot less frustrating. It doesn't mesh well with the level design, though. The biggest issue with the level design, though, is how the levels sometimes break flow. Sonic the Hedgehog has always had a bad habit of making platforms that absolutely shatter the flow of gameplay. The goal of any platformer is to get through a level as quickly as possible. Because of this, parts that slow you down should ideally be something you can navigate around or get through quickly, because otherwise they're incredibly frustrating. The Sonic series has struggled with this since game 1, with what I call the floating platform problem. There's an over-reliance on slow-moving platforms. These platforms will slowly move back and forth, and often there's no way to safely continue except at specific points. These are the bane of my existence. Not only do these kill the ever-important flow with several seconds of immobility, you can't get around them. You're just stuck waiting there for a few agonizing seconds, and you can't do anything about it. Now, how would one go about fixing them? Remove them! Gone! 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 It's all about the flow. Making challenges that can slow the player down is okay, but making platforms that guarantee the player will be slowed down isn't good. Oh, and there's also set pieces, but what can I say about them? They look cool and require almost no effort. They do look really cool, though. One thing that the games have always been pretty good at, provided the game is stable enough, is making some visual spectacle. I think it can work. There's a lot that needs fixing, but I also had a lot of fun with these levels. Unlike the extra content. Snarky comment quota met. The missions on their own aren't much. You could easily beat them in an hour. To pad out the runtime a little bit, after completing a set of levels, you encounter a locked boss door. To unlock the boss door, you need three keys, one from each zone. There's a set of five challenges per zone per character, so it's 45 for each Sonic and 90 in total. Problem one, this is kind of a waste of time. Doing one challenge on either Sonic, not both, gets one of the three keys, so of 90 challenges, you only need to do 9 total to progress. This makes the challenges feel less like a challenge and more like a roadblock that you can sink way too much time into. Either the quota of challenges completed needs to be raised, or the number of challenges need to be lowered. I'd take the second option in a heartbeat, because aside from it freeing up a bunch of development time to make more levels, it would minimize the amount of time spent on these extremely aggravating nightmares. And yes, I know that's a dramatic exaggeration, but try playing through any of these levels when the tutorial robot has a voice like Navi mixed with a Tachikoma and the thing repeats the same exact lines every time you do a challenge. Wanna do a doppelganger race? Let's just do double if you lose your doppelganger, Sonic. Restart the challenge because the spin dash is finicky and screwed up? Let's just do double if you lose your doppelganger, Sonic. Restart the challenge four times because the spin dash straight up doesn't work sometimes? With every single restart. Let's just do double if you lose your doppelganger, Sonic. Going to do another doppelganger challenge after you finally beat that first challenge? The ones that 
that I want to focus on are the challenges with other characters, both because they're slightly more interesting than the others, and they allow me to talk about the extended cast of the Sonic canon. Some of the challenges are also unremarkable, being simple races or collectathons. A tier above that is the levels where some obstacle is in the way and you press the designated buttons to remove it. All I have to say about those is that the one with Rouge involves her doing an animation that looks disturbingly like she's flashing enemies. Immature? Maybe. Inaccurate? No. The best one is Vector's music beat slappy thing, because although it's very frustrating to do correctly, it's the only one in which the character's personality is used to influence the gameplay. Which brings me to the characters and my problem with them. A lot of people hate the extended Sonic cast and wish they would go away forever. While I recognize the flaws in their implementation, I disagree with the notion that they should disappear. Except Charmy. If Omachao is Navi mixed with a Tachikoma, then Charmy is that combination after being locked in a cell for three days with nothing but lucky charms and speed. But aside from him, I like the extended roster. It's just that they have nothing to do. Part of the problem is that they don't have much reason to stick around. Shadow completed his character arc in the early to mid-2000s. Silver's arc was restored by not having to be an issue in the first place, time travel is weird. I don't even know what the Chaotix do, but the point I'm trying to make is that the extended cast completed their character arcs and now they need new things to do and new motivations to do it. Because what do they do in the current games? Not much. I mean, they talk some, on rare occasions one of them will be playable, but they don't play too differently from normal. Often they do next to nothing. And that makes me sad. I want to see them do more. I want them to take more active roles in the games they're in. So, after all the levels, the challenges, the characters, the story, the skill shop that adds less to the game than putting scratch and sniff stickers on the box, you get all the Chaos Emeralds, reveal Eggman's plan, and fight the final boss. Eggman's plan is kind of logical, but really weird. After he's left floating in space at the end of Sonic Colors, he finds the Time Eater. He uses this to go back in time and undo his past failures. Does that mean he makes himself win every fight, or does that prevent every fight from happening? I think, but I'm not sure about this, that it's the latter, because by locking all these stages in my digital set, which as we all know is a time limbo, that means the events are cut out of the timeline. It's implied by sending these stages to the time limbo, the rest of that game is cut out of the timeline too. Therefore, Eggman has created a timeline in which he's never lost because he's never tried to take over the world. So now he can kill both Sonics here and take over the world. But hey, that's just a theory, or maybe it's the plot. I don't know. But then, Sonic's friends show up, and with the power of friendship and chaos emeralds, the Sonics become Super Sonics, and they fly after the Diablo Raid boss. This boss isn't very good. What I'll say about it is that the visuals look great, as always. The clock aesthetic is top tier, the boss looks appropriately intimidating, the sun is... there? I like the way this looks. The way it plays? Not so much. The controls feel floaty, and the fact that I'm floating doesn't excuse that. The other problem is that the boss just isn't a threat. He teleports arms at you. They don't do anything. He shoots projectiles at you. They're pretty easy to dodge. Oh, and it's also hard to get caught off guard when the other characters yell about every attack every time the boss does it. The biggest threat in the level is running out of rings, since being supersonic drains your ring count. You can collect rings as you fly through the purple void, but the screen has so much stuff going on and the rings are so tiny that half the time I can't see the things until they fly past me. Perhaps I need to stop railing Superman mugs full of grape juice and Jack Daniels. And then the game ends. Everyone returns to the appropriate timeline, Sonic eats his chili dog with a bow on it, and the game ends. The final scene is cute, just like the first one. Hey Sonic! Enjoy your future! It's gonna be great! <sighs> and that's the game. The game. The game. The game. Stop playing games! I don't know! Yes, you do. I don't! Why won't you just tell me why you're here? You know the answer to that. Stop asking stupid questions and tell me why I'm here, because you know why. 
You knew why I was here from the moment I walked in the door. I left you doubled up on the bathroom floor begging for forgiveness on day one. I can break you down to dust in two minutes, anytime, any place. So you tell me why. Because I deserve it. Good. Sonic means a lot to me. The games are flawed. Heavily flawed. And that makes me sad, because I really want them to be good. Sonic Generations is one of the high points in the modern Sonic's history, and it's one of the only high points. After that, everything just kind of went downhill. And I know that this is corny as hell, but I have hope for the series. There's a lot of fun to be had in Sonic Generations. It's a good game. And even in later entries, there's been enough fun bits to keep me invested in the series, willing to see where they're going to go next. There's a lot to be done, but I think it can get better. Do you ever shut up? Unfortunately, no. What are you doing? I don't want to have to beat the sh** out of you again. Sure. Let me ask you something. Do you really care? Well, of course I care. Just not in any way you'd appreciate it. Yeah. Sure. By the way, I would appreciate it if you never tried to tell me what I do and don't deserve again. Do you honestly think that's going to stop me?